Okay. So, one to eight. There's the problem right there at scale. It's scaling by six, which is kind of dumb. So scale that by one. So now we're going to have seven bars. Uh, now the Y max, this again is a problem. The Y max is at 1.15. That's 115%. The max we got was 48%. So make it like 0.5. I did. And then make this zero. Then just press graph. That's what I did. Don't press zoom nine again. Just press graph. Got it. Good. Beat it. Yeah, zoom nine. Zoom nine is kind of like it gets you in the neighborhood. In this case, it's a pretty pissy neighborhood. Can you go back to that sure. Absolutely, Ben. Oh, sorry. So yeah, pretty much. I always start the lowest value in my left column will be the lowest x min. One more than my highest value becomes x max, and that's because that last bar won't show up unless I do that. And then I try to scale by one whenever I can. Sometimes the TI won't let you. I don't understand why, but sometimes it won't. You have point one in the scale. It did that. Oh. So we can change anything you want. Uh, actually, point one's not bad. That means it's 10%. It's every, well, you don't see it. Why don't you see it? You should be seeing it right here. Oh, I know why. Because you don't see that. The y-axis is hidden because you started at 1. You'd have, to, you'd have to start the x at 0 to see that scale there. Uh, but this doesn't make any sense because right. there's nothing at 0. So there's your point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point. so I just leave it the way it was. Yeah, that, that's something that, that was left over from when it first graphed that. I didn't bother messing with it. It's not visible now anyway. But you guys are getting really uber analytical, and I like that about you. Why am I getting invalid? Oh, that just means you're trying to grasp something that doesn't exist. We can fix that real quick. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Quit. L1, L2. Oh, it's, it's plot two. It's, it's the one that's, you're not even talking about this one. It's the, yeah. it's, the one, it's the one that's turned on, it's giving you grief. There it is. There you go. Now, friends. Friends. You're in your analytical. I'll walk you for it. The big thing, the big takeaway is, would you call it bell-shaped? No. Hell no. It's not bell-shaped. It's actually highly skewed. It's highly skewed. Now, do you have an average for me? Did you have an average? One bar stats on the average? Let's check it out. Stat, one bar stats, L1, L2. Okay, I got about 2.1. 2.1, got a 2.1, beautiful, love it, thank you. So what I'm gonna do, um, right, right here where you see it, ish. It's a little better, and I'll put it on here. So, for the experimental, for the experimental results, we get an average of about 2.1. Ignore the standard deviation of 1.43. Uh, Ignore that. I'm not even sure why it's. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I, yeah, I did L1, L2 instead of L1, L3. There. There. 2.1. Ignore the standard deviation of 1.4. Since the distribution is highly, highly skewed, that doesn't mean anything anyway. Now, some of you are going to say, wait a minute, Rule. We've been talking for six weeks about when the distribution is skewed, you also shouldn't use the average. That's true in a sample. But this is the entire population based on our results, which means that is the average. Whether or not it's skewed or not, that's the average. So the sample can't be misleading because it's not a sample anymore. Does that make sense? It's a slight point, but it's an important one. That is the average of this distribution. And granted, I like, I like that you guys are upset by it because that means the average is right about here. The average is right about here. Yes, 2.1, 2, 2.1. The waiter has to hold his hand over here in order to balance cookies. And the reason he has to hold his hand so far to the right is because of all that stuff out there. That makes, hopefully that makes perfect sense. Good for you guys, good for you guys. Now, here's a question. Do these percentages look predictable? They, towards the end, they get a little bit weird with this hiccup. Because that shouldn't, technically speaking, that hiccup will smooth over time. 48%, right there. About half. About half. Let's think about this. Let's, I want to add one more column that's okay with you guys for today. I might use black. I'm use a different color. This will take us home. We'll, we'll continue this, this discussion on Thursday. I didn't get quite as far in the experiments that I wanted to, and that's okay because you guys have some fantastic questions. Let's make a theoretical column next to our experimental one. Okay. Dave, what are you saying? 
It just seems like so easy when you see what's happening. When you see what's happening. Good! And that's why I love the fact that you guys micromanage your graphs. I love that. But at the same time, if you took 111 and survived it, which I think you all did, this is a pretty predictable shape from 111. And you might not see it right away. We have, Actually, it's predictable from 105, too. Some of the stuff we did in 105 actually followed the shape. So here's, we'll do, I'm going to call this P of X. What the hell? Because we can actually calculate what percentages they should be exactly over time. This should be 0.5. Because if you all flip a coin in this room, how many of you should flip heads? Half of you should flip heads on the first roll. Or first flip, I guess. So 0.5 of you are going to be done in the first roll, yes? Now, what should this probability be? 0.25. Why? Half again. There's a half a chance you flip tails on the first, followed by a half you flip heads on the second. So it's one half times a half, which is 0.25. Continuing that logic, do you see what's going to happen all the way down? It'd be a half times a half. It's exactly. It keeps. It goes down by a half. It's exponential decay. 0.5 is your multiplier. Just like we did in 105 back in the day. In 111, I'm sure you did tons of this half-life stuff in 111. This is going to be one half cubed, which is 0.125, which is damn close to 13%. Now this is where it starts getting weird because these are the fluky, if you will, the fluky results. And in a small sample, even of a couple hundred, it's not enough to see the flukiness. So this should be one half to the fourth, which is about 6%, I think. This is going to be one half to the fifth, which is about, I'm going to guess it's 3%. Now they're not that far off from what we saw. They're, they're close-ish. They're close-ish. This is going to be one half to the sixth, which is about one and a half percent. And then we start getting into really, really small numbers. Now, this was the one that was up by quite a bit. Now, we saw that cool. Somebody, who was it that had a bunch of sixes? Yeah, there we go. Alan had a whole bunch of those cool outlier results at once. It happens. But you just want to look up here and look at Vegas. This one here should be half of that, 0 0.0075. Now, technically speaking, did I do that right? I think I did that right. To the seventh, thank you, Veronica. I'm sorry, I was thinking about the math. I just have to make no, no, you're good. <laughs> now, technically speaking, this is never going to end, is it? Because technically speaking, you could keep flipping tails an infinitely long period of time. But past the point, it's so unlikely that it's not worth considering, yes? So what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you guys, is I'm going to cheat real quick here. I'm going to cheat real quick. We'll come back to this one on Thursday, but I don't want to let you leave until you see this. I'm going to do, yeah, L1. Watch this, watch this bastard move. I'm going to do 0.5 to the L1 power. Because eh? that's essentially what we're doing here. 0.5 to the first. 0.5 squared. 0.5, just bastard move. Totally bastard move. But that's what we're doing, essentially, right? OK, there they are. All the way down. Now, technically speaking, if I run one bar stats on these bad boys, now it's L4, yes? L1, L4. Look, look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's shy because technically speaking, that thing should go on forever, yes? Yeah. That thing should go on forever. It should go to 8 and 9 and 10 and 11. But it's shy by 0.8%. I can live with that. Look at your average, 1.94. Your average should be 2 exactly. I might develop a quiz around this one, too, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. You guys didn't like it very much. <laughs> but I love what David said. Oh my God. As soon as you see what it's supposed to do, it's clear. And that's what was so cool about your guys' results. Your results were damn close to what they quote unquote should have been. But they were just far enough away to kind of keep you guys in the dark about it. That's the beauty of it. Now we'll come back. We'll start with this one. I'm going to save your guys' results. I'm going to save these over in L5 and L6. You don't have to do it. I'll keep them in the, in the TI for us. Uh, so we're going to do this L2, we'll do this L4, L2. There. Beautiful. Thank you guys. We'll see you on Thursday, yes? Yep. Knock out some quizzes if you want.